morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Ana Bermudez. I'm the marketing and events manager at Rogers Park Business Alliance. And we have been, this is our second uh, webinar on the Let's Get Digital series. Um, we have, we thought that it would be really important, especially now to kind of have refreshers and sometimes first timers also like uh, need more help with social media and just with being um, e-marketing now because of COVID, many of our shoppers will be shopping online, will be probably uh, browsing online and picking up in person. So the way that uh, people are gonna be shopping this holiday is gonna be very, very different from uh, the past. And so we have, uh, we thought about what kind of webinars we can host to have you ready for the holidays. So the first one we did was a month ago and it was Let's Get Digital. And it was about um, how to get uh, e your website e-commerce ready and to also think about what ways you could get ready for the holidays uh, and have your, um, how, how to communicate with your clients, how to let them know about your hours, that kind of stuff. And so this time we're gonna dig in a little bit more about social media. And so for that, we have a five, we have Lisi uh, Crandler. Crandler. <laughs> um, who is going to be uh, talking about social media marketing. Just an FYI, uh, we are recording this session uh, so that we can post it on our YouTube channel and then uh, people that couldn't join us today can watch it another time. And um, also everyone I had muted to come in, but um, uh, we will be taking questions um, I believe in sections, but Lissy will explain that a little bit more. And so um, Welcome, Lizzie, take it away. I'm gonna make you host. Great. Thank you, Anna. And thank you everyone for coming today. Um, this is a social media workshop. We're excited to have you this snowy Monday morning. Um, I'm Lizzie Kreinler from A5. A5 is a branding and digital marketing agency based out of the loop. Um, we focus on economic development, community building and sustainability. We've worked with Rogers Park Business Alliance for a number of years and have been the marketing partner on Howard Street Chicago for many years as well. Um, I have a background in social media and manage social media for many of A5's accounts um, and have familiarity with restaurants, retailers, municipalities, nonprofits, chambers, and more. So today, um, RPBA, somebody from RPBA will be monitoring the chat so if you do have questions and want to uh, use the chat feature, they'll be there to respond. I'll also stop throughout the presentation to take questions and we'll take questions at the end. Um, and we have this going until 11 a.m. today, so an hour. Um, we will definitely not go over and hopefully get you out of here a few minutes early. Um, so I'd like to start by doing uh, kind of quick rapid fire introductions. Um, there aren't too many of us um, there's a good number of us here on a, the call today, but I think it'd be helpful if we knew, you know, how many business owners, how many nonprofits, um, just kind of who's represented. So I'll call on you based on your Zoom name and just say your name and your organization. We'll keep it quick. Um, and you might have to unmute yourself before you speak. Um, Rebecca? Good morning, everyone. I'm with RPBA. <laughs> nice to meet you. Curtis? Yes, good morning. I'm also with uh, Rogers Park Business Alliance. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center. Great. Gary? Good morning, I'm Gary Spangler. I'm the designated managing broker, owner, and realtor for G Spang Real Estate and Property Management. Great, and I see you're, it's not snowing where you are in Rogers Park Edgewater there. <laughs> that wasn't taken on a nice summer day. <laughs> I wish we could go back there. <laughs> uh, Lady B. Oh, I think we're having some issues hearing Lady B. Um, she owns the Lady B Boutique, Caribbean clothing boutique on Howard. I'll sp I'm sorry to speak for you, <laughs> just to introduce her. I think your microphone's not working there, Beulah. It's all right, we can come back. Um, Sarah? 
Hi, I'm Sarah Lukens. I own Chi Town Magpie on Sheridan Road. Great, welcome. Thank you. Patricia? Patricia? Hi, this is Patricia. I'm the owner of Athena Board Game Cafe. Great. Carlos? Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm co-owner of Second Fridge Company, which is a fermented vegetable and condiment company. Great. We're at Rogers Park. Um, Jennifer Clark. Hi, I'm Jennifer Clark. Oh, I can, I'll turn on my video, but I'm sort of running it in and out of my computer. I'm from Loyola University. Great. Badera. All right, we can come back to Badera. And um, I didn't introduce John Harris at the beginning. John Harris is the principal of A5. <laughs> Waving there. I am Badara, owner of Badu Senegalese Cuisine. Great. All right, thank you all for joining us today. I'm gonna share my screen and um, go through a presentation on social media. Can everyone see that? All right. All right, so we're gonna start by talking about some social media platforms and then set some expectations for what might happen um, this, this challenging and unique, here we go, um, this challenging and unique holiday shopping season given COVID. And then we'll go into how you can get ready and how you could start today to be ready with um, your social media and digital accounts for the holiday shopping season. Um, so social media, you know, it can feel very overwhelming, but it's a, a great way to be your own source of news. So you get to control your own story and what people are um, able to see and learn about your business and what you're, what you're doing. So you can share success stories. You can um, kind of get creative about what you want to portray to the world. It's also a great way to engage in two-way communication, um, to have reviews, to really show your business in a positive light. Um, Facebook, I think everyone knows, is, is the biggest social media platform at 2.5 billion monthly active users. Um, that had, had been increasing. Um, one in five page views occurs on Facebook. And that's not just social media, that is um, page views on the web or on, on Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, obviously more business focused, has 303 monthly active users. This is a great place if you're recruiting um, or if you're looking for other B2B communications. Instagram has 500 million daily users on Instagram stories and 1 billion monthly active users. 62% um, of people say they become more interested in a brand or product after seeing it on stories. So stories is a great place and we can get into this more uh, to, to get right in front of people um, where they're, they're gonna stumble across your information and um, perhaps be intrigued by it. And then Twitter, Twitter has 330 million monthly active users and 500 million tweets are sent per day. So here's some just overarching stats to show you that this is where people are. This is very active um, and social media is a great place for you to be. Um, but before you get overwhelmed, we're going to talk about how to make a plan and how to be the person who's in control of your story. Um, so using social media to be ready for holiday shopping during COVID. Um, people are, are more likely to be shopping online this holiday season to avoid crowds and because restrictions will, are in place. Um, and they're also more likely if they do visit your store to research first online. So um, make sure that on Google, your hours are up to date. On your website, um, people know how they can buy things, how they can engage with you. Um, make sure that, that it's really easy for people to know what they can do um, when they come into the store and how they can buy something. Start now. Um, holiday shopping starts after Halloween, Halloween Saturday. The holidays are two months away. So we're gonna give you some tools and tips today to know how to get started, um, but don't let them sit in your, on your to-do list for too long. Um, it's, it helps to get 
out in front of things. Make it easy for people to take action. So you might be starting to do um, Instagram shopping where people can shop directly from Instagram, your Instagram account, um, or maybe you're taking contactless payments. But if you're not adding anything like that, no matter what, just make sure that it's easy that pe for people to find what they're looking for. So the order now from your menu, that button is really front and center. If they're Googling your business, um, you know, donate now, purchase now, sign up now, it's very easy for them to find how to take action. Um, be honest about changes in your business. We've seen this on, um, on other people's restaurant websites, other accounts. Um, you can, people are understanding it's a, it's a different, difficult time for everyone. This uh, pandemic has touched everyone's lives in some ways. So it's okay for you to have a message on your website that says, you know, our supply chain is, um, we're experiencing, you know, difficulty receiving these goods and um, please be patient with us as it'll take us longer for us, for us to ship to you. Um, or, you know, we're, we're closing earlier on Fridays, but if you need anything, you can set up a special appointment with me in advance. Um, it's okay to kind of put yourself in, um, kind of have yourself shine through and, and just be the business owner that's uh, willing to, to be upfront and honest with your customers. Um, if you have sales to promote, plan them now. Holiday sales usually start the week of Thanksgiving and last up to a week after Cyber Monday. So it used to be Black Friday and Cyber Monday were very distinct sale holidays. And now it's all sort of blended into this uh, two week um, holiday sale um, extravaganza with one more day and um, you know one more day add-ons. Be aware, be forewarned that Facebook and Instagram ads do cost more during this time. Um, since they're auction-based ads, the, um, it takes more money to bid to get your ad to be seen uh, when activity is higher. So just plan accordingly. It doesn't mean don't advertise, but if, if you're not running a um, Cyber Monday sale, for instance, or a Black Friday sale, for instance, um, you know, just be aware that it might not be a good time to be putting much budget towards your ads. Um, show that COVID, COVID precautions are in place in your business. So the photos that you post, people should be wearing masks and gloves. Um, the people should be standing six feet apart. Make sure people feel safe buying from you. Have it front and center. Have a section on your website for COVID so that people know um, you're doing something about it and they can feel kind of rest assured that they um, will be safe coming in. And then be sensitive with your messaging. Um, you know, I saw somewhere, somebody said, what are you waiting for? And one of the comments wrote, you know, a stimulus check. So I thought that was a good example of a kind of tone deaf comment where, um, or tone deaf call for action. Um, since people are out of work or taking care of a sick family member, you know, we wanna make sure we're being extra sensitive to that. All right, I'm gonna go into social media planning and what you can do now to be ready for the, the holiday season. Um, does anyone have any questions up until now? And just remember to unmute yourself. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, social media steps to success. So this is how you can approach social media to make it most manageable for you and most successful. And this is relevant now, it's relevant always. <laughs> so um, get started on this for the holidays, but this is a good practice to just get into. Um, so you wanna start by setting goals and metrics, and, and we'll get into each of these more. And you'll create a plan, combine this with your other marketing efforts, have a clear call to action, create an offer, schedule your posts in advance, advertise so you can boost or um, use ads manager. And then as your ads and posts are running, make sure you monitor them, comment and share from other pages and measure your results. And you're measuring your results to, to make sure that you're hitting those goals. 
And I see a lot of people writing down. I think RPBA is going to share this presentation after. So um, I'm going to keep going so that we don't get too slowed down. Um, but if you, yeah, if you, <laughs> if you can take a few notes, but know that you'll have this again to refer back to. So set goals. When you're thinking about goals, these are like the really big overarching things. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to increase revenue or donations, uh, depending if you're a business or nonprofit? Are you trying to increase your brand awareness so more people know about you? Are you trying to boost your brand engagement so more people are interacting with you? Do you want to build a community around your business so you have those core followers? Um, do you want to demonstrate effective customer service? So you're trying to think about um, what goals make sense for your business and what you're really driving toward. For Howard Street, it's all about visitors. We want to bring visitors to the street. We ran a series of um, Instagram live events that were more about brand awareness and getting more likes and followers on Instagram. Um, but the goal of driving visitors to the street was still very much there. And then determine metrics. So what does success look like for your business? Would you feel good if more people are visiting your store? If your web traffic got higher? If you saw an increase in online purchases? If people are fill out, filling out the contact us form, which might make sense in, in real estate where they need to have a conversation with you first. Um, if you're spreading awareness, if you have an engaged community, maybe you're, you're doing more grassroots organizing or you're trying to build more momentum, um, or if you're seeing an increase in your, your clients or your customers. So you've chosen the goal and then determine what metrics you're gonna use to track that goal. Create a plan. So when we create content plans for social media, we always start with buckets. Um, so almost always one of the buckets is stories. Social media posts that have a person in them, especially like a, you can see the person's face and expression perform much better than social media posts without a person of just an object or food. Um, so making sure that you have stories of people and places as part of your content plan is a great idea testimonials and quotes. So that could be from customers. It could also be from vendors. It could be you your, as a store owner. Brand. So this is your key messaging for your brand. What makes your brand different or unique? Um, and this can go back if you've done branding for your business, this could go back to that. Um, but this, you can repeat what your business is about many, many times before people, you know, when you're sick of it, um, people are just starting to understand what you do. So, um, you know, you can keep going back to those key messages. There might be events. Um, those might be more virtual now or maybe uh, smaller, um, but maybe it's a special or a deal or an offer. And then um, sometimes it makes sense to have kind of a behind the scenes. So sometimes a bakery will show you, you know, a video of how they make their croissants or something like that. That gives you a little peek into how things are done. Then create an internal posting schedule. So whichever your content categories are, decide internally for yourself that you know, stories are gonna be told on Mondays, promotions are gonna be told on, are shared on Wednesdays, and brand messaging is going to be um, posted on Thursdays. Nobody will know that you're following this you know, very regular schedule by just looking at your account but it helps you be more organized and it makes sure that you're um, like a steady, predictable source of information. Write your content. So this would be called original content. Write these posts and schedule them four to eight weeks out. So right now you're writing posts that will take you through the new year. Then as you go, you're going to obviously monitor this and make sure the posts are taking off and you're replying to comments. Um, but you can also pepper in other posts as you think of them, and you can share posts from other pages, share inspiration, anything else that um, you want to add on top, but make sure that you have this, you know, three posts a week or so of scheduled content, you know, in the can. 
Um, in Instagram, you can create highlights to feature what's special about your business. So highlights are um, under uh, the circles that are above your grid. And these are stay there forever. So based on um, from the posts that you have in your grid, you can choose several to create a highlight. And if you have, um, for instance, for Howard Street, we have a highlight for every for almost all of the businesses on Howard Street that we feature. And if you click on that highlight, you see several different posts from that business. So you can use this to sort of call out um, Google ads calls and call outs, um, kind of call out the value or the something special about your business. And then in Instagram, you use stories kind of like how you use sharing in Facebook where you can um, share content other people are posting and editorialize it with text and stickers. Um, and you can also write your own stories. Stories are really powerful on Instagram because people just click on the first story in their, on their homepage. And if they just keep clicking, they're gonna see your story. It's just gonna come up in, their, um, in front of their face. So it's a really great way to just happen to be in front of people. Um, and as you saw before, people who see uh, products and stories are, are more likely to purchase them. This is a draft content calendar. And this, um, we just have the pre-COVID note because there are some events in here. Um, but for Howard Street, every Tuesday we were featuring a business. So Lady B are there on the first Tuesday of this month. Um, we have Harris RS, um, Buffalo Joe's and Factory Theater. On Thursday, we were sharing events and we chose Thursday because it sort of led into the weekend. And then on Fridays, there was brand messaging. So Howard Street is a Howard Street is a place where you can be you. There are 80 languages spoken here, global cuisine, close to the L, close to the lake, um, creatively charged. So more just Howard Street brand in general and less about a specific feature. And then we shared content from our PBA, from businesses, um, other events that were happening you know, over and above this. So how to develop engaging content. So this is when you're actually writing the post. Make sure you know your post purpose going in. What do you want people to do? Um, I always think of a post in three parts. You have an engaging introduction, then you have the important information, and then you have the call to action. So the important information, who, what, where, when, and then the call to action, make it really easy for people to know what you want them to do and give them a link to how to do it. Make sure that your photo relates well to what you're asking people to do and that there's a strong focal point. And we'll show you some examples of photos later or next. Tag everyone involved, add hashtags, make sure that your links work. Um, and you might wanna go back and check that as um, you go in case if you're linking to an external site, sometimes those can change. If you have budget set aside, boost uh, boost right away. You can schedule a boost to start um, the moment that the ad is going to, or the post is going to be posted and then track your metrics and adjust as needed. And I have a sample um, dashboard for tracking in here later as well. Um, here's the Howard Street page to show you some, um, some sample posts. So as I mentioned, there are a lot of people of happy faces, engaged, you see what their business is about. Um, it doesn't take much for you to really understand, you know, that's P and J uh, footwear, or that's Peckish Pig and there's burgers and beer. You get a sense of the vibrancy, you get a sense of what they're doing. Um, the photos have a strong focal point. So make sure that your photos, you know, it's not of a big crowd that if somebody just glances at it, it doesn't look like you know um, the backs of a bunch of people, or you know they're not sure exactly what they're looking at. Um, usually, a person or an item or food. Make sure that it you know it's you're you're giving people a strong focal point. Um, that the photos are active and inviting, and that they tell a story. Um, here's another example, and we have one with a mask um, to show you. You know, it's, it's really important to show photos of people in masks. Um, this, uh, this is um, Carm's Little Italy. So the post with a person, again, did better than just food, but in both they're 
you know, beautiful photos, engaging. Um, you see what the, the restaurant's about and it ties to the copy. Um, and same with Instagram. This is a little bit more about kind of your Instagram palette and just having an engaging grid with photos and then items of representing your business. Social media icons. So this is an example we did for the Village of Niles. Sometimes your posts don't have a photo. Um, and so you can develop kind of a text icon that would make sense for what, for what you're doing. And there are apps that make this really easy. Word Swag and Adobe Spark are two of them. Um, and you can also use these on your website um, or other places. But here, obviously for the, the village, they need a traffic alert or weather an alert. You might have sale, you know, special promotion, um, change in hours, you know, curbside pickup announcement or something like that, um, where you don't necessarily, you could get a stock photo or you could come up with something like this. And these stand out really well and look really beautiful among amongst all the um, kind of clutter that people might see on their, their feed. Facebook events. So obviously um, events are different these days, but people still um, can create Facebook events uh, for virtual events or meetups or smaller things. Um, if you have, maybe you have um, special shopping hours, you could create an event for that. So it's a nice way for people to see and um, kind of find the information easily. So again, make sure there's an engaging photo. If there are co-hosts, you've invited them um, and make sure that it's, it's really easy to read and the, the name is clear. So people get what you're talking about without much effort. Um, what not to do, don't use um, generic images or clip art. So often we ask, you know, is this really specific to your business or could anyone have posted this? And if anyone could have posted it, maybe try something that looks more like your business or is specific to you. Um, make sure that the, the images don't get cut off. Facebook has, um, they published the, the ratio, the pixels that images can be and just make sure you edit uh, your photos if need be to fit in that. Um, and usually photos they'll make responsive, but if you have, um, if you're sharing or if you have um, like an icon or something text or web banner, it could get cut off. Um, don't use vague images or Im images that don't add to the story. So we kind of talked about that already. Make sure your images are sharp and they look nice. They're not fuzzy. Um, and again, they have, they have a clear focal point. All right, so we're gonna get into Facebook advertising. Does anyone have any questions about creating a content calendar or um, writing an engaging post? All right, I'm gonna keep going. Facebook advertising. So one thing that um, is good to remember about Facebook advertising is a little can go a long way. Um, a, there, so even if you haven't set aside much budget for Facebook advertising, um, it might be something to consider, especially going into holidays, just to kind of get in front of more people and to get more people to like your page. Um, it can be worth the marketing dollars, especially compared to other ways you might be marketing. There are two ways that you can um, kind of go about advertising on Facebook. One is by boosting posts and the other is by creating an ads campaign. Um, for either, I like to use ads manager. It gives you a lot more um, control and kind of walks you through the ad process. But if you're really used to boosting posts and that's been working for you, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Facebook um, for the user side is the most user-friendly, most intuitive. And as you get deeper into the back end, becomes less and less uh, intuitive. So sometimes ads manager can be kind of uh, clunky to get familiar with. Um, so for boosting posts, this is when you've posted something to your page and then you put budget behind it to get more reach and engagement. And you can, like I said before, boost it, uh, if you schedule to boost, you can, or schedule to post, you can schedule to boost it the second that it gets published, which is a really great thing to do. So it gets out the gate really strong. So when you're um, writing a post on Facebook, there's a, you know, a boost post button and you click on that 
and you select your audience starting with uh, the, the uh, geography, and then you can choose interests, other demographic information. You choose your budget and duration, and then um, go ahead and post. Once you boost, you cannot edit the text to the ad. You can edit the features of your campaign, um, like your demographics and budget, but you cannot edit the text. So be sure you proofread it and make sure that it it's not just valid today, but it'll make sense for the duration of the ad. Um, Facebook likes when you use little, you know, small amounts of text and when you boost for at least four days, um, it gets the most traction that way. And a good initial budget, we always say, is $10, week, $10 a week for boosted posts. And you could put that behind one post, you could do five for two posts. Um, of course, more budget will get you more results but $10 a week is a good starting place. Um, when you're choosing your audience, it shows you the expected performance. So it's good to just give yourself some time to play with that and try to get the most, um, the most performance, the highest performance for the budget that you're setting. Um, at the same time, you, know, you wanna make sure you're reaching the right people. So if you're really interested in just reaching Rogers Park, um, your performance numbers might go down because that's such a small demographic compared to maybe all of the United States, um, but you don't really want somebody in Montana to see your ad. So, um, you know, when you're, when you're setting the audience, you know, just be mindful of performance and kind of, you can tinker with it to get it just right. Um, at the same time that you're boosting posts, it's really great to be running a likes campaign and an engagement campaign. So what we do on Howard Street is at the same time, using the same ad set, so creative and copy, we run one ads campaign to people who don't like our page to ask them to like our page and a separate campaign to people who do like our page, asking them to engage with our posts. Um, and you can choose, you know, exclude people who like my page. And this is really good for getting more likes, but also you wanna continue to market to the people who already follow you and have your ads show up on their feed so you build excitement, they're more likely to purchase from you or follow you or visit or whatever your goal is um, because they've already liked you. So what we'll often do is, like I said, create these ad sets and we'll have um, three or four different photos with the same text and see which performs the best. And um, that way you're not, you know, if you just go out with one and it doesn't perform very well, it could, you know, your campaign could flop. But if you you know, have these different A-B tests, you can um, kind of guarantee that something will perform better. And then you're also learning more about what resonates with your audience. Um, a typical budget of about $100 per month buys about 2,500 likes per year. And Facebook is making it harder to buy likes. Um, it used to be much easier. So if you come across pages and you're like, how did they get this? Um, sometimes they did it 10 years ago. <laughs> um, this is an example. So I'm kind of showing you behind the scenes for this ad. Um, Badu, I think you might be on the call and you're getting a, a little shout out here. Um, this is Badu holding two of his delicious, uh, delicious dishes, wearing a mask in his new location. Um, we have on the edge of Chicago and Evanston, Howard Street is a vital and diverse neighborhood in Rogers Park. Learn about local businesses, virtual events, and great stories from Howard Street, Chicago. And then we show, you know, this is bed two and here's the location. This ad over two months generated almost a thousand likes for the page. Um, Facebook has a metric called estimated ad recall lift, which is the number of people who may remember seeing your ads within two days. Um, that's at 3,300. The reach is almost 60,000. Impressions close to 100,000. Um, and we spent $360 to run this. Um, monitor, comment, and share. So you want to be monitoring your account 24-7. So it's good to have it on your phone. You can set it so um, comments will appear as push notifications. Um, if people are commenting something inappropriate, you can hide that as an administrator once they posted it. Um, share content. So you wanna uh, engage your followers by sharing their content. People um, obviously feel really good when, when you like and share their content. Um, tag photos and posts that you post. 
Um, and when you share something, you can also tag and write a little message um, about the person or the account that you're sharing from. In Instagram, you can use stories to share other people's com comments and then look for relevant Facebook groups and engage with them. Um, and sometimes that, you know, Facebook groups can, um, <laughs> can kind of go off the rails, but there are um, certainly some that are, you know, really helpful resources and they can be a great place for you to, um, a great group that you can get your, your information out to. Make sure you're replying to comments really quickly to show that you're on it, answering questions. Um, sometimes people might say, you know, well, what address is this at? Or what's the phone number? Or what does that cost? And you wanna make sure you reply with that really quickly. Um, Facebook does have reviews. So you can ask some of your top customers or your friends or family to write good reviews. So you're getting um, that five stars on your page. And then make sure you're following back. So find other people to follow. People who are following you, follow them back and then like and share their content. So you're showing that you're active, you're showing you're on it. This is a sample dashboard um, and we don't, we've expanded this into maybe a 25 page uh, report at this point, but in the beginning and a while ago, we were using a dashboard like this for Howard Street and it's still um, you know, a good reference for getting started with social media metrics. So one thing this helps you do is month over month, um, be able to track your progress. And as we talked in the beginning about goals and metrics, you wanna make sure that every month you're documenting what you're doing and then checking it against those metrics to see how you're performing. So um, Facebook followers, are you growing month to month? Are your posts reaching more people? Are your top performing posts performing better than last month's? Um, on Instagram, what are your total followers? And it's always good to then go back to your website because all of this might be driving traffic to your website. It's a good metric to add in. So how many people are visiting the website? How many people are going from your Facebook page to your website? Um, and making sure everything kind of the arising tide lifts all boats that way. Um, we always like to look at, at comps. So who, you know, have your eye on other pages that are similar to your business and see what they're doing, see how many followers they have. And um, just make sure you're kind of measuring up or exceeding what the competition is doing. Um, to summarize, so decide what your goals are, create a plan, start now. The holidays are coming quickly. Um, the snow kind of helps us all remember that. <laughs> Write compelling posts with a clear call to action create an offer. So we didn't talk too much about this, but even if you create an offer, um, you know, that goes, that goes a week, that goes um, through the weekend, something that um, kind of creates urgency around people coming in. Post photos and icons with a strong focal point, boost and advertise if you can. Combine this with other marketing efforts. So we didn't get too much into this, but the content that you're posting on Facebook, you can use in your email letter, you can post to your website. Um, it might be something that goes on a flyer. So it's, um, it's actually really good when your marketing efforts all are coordinated and you are repeating photos and content. You know, maybe it's changing the copy a little to be more medium form or long form, thinking social media is short form. Um, but it's actually really good when everything's sort of working in cohesion and you're giving people the opportunity to see what you're doing in multiple places. Monitor and adjust as needed and then um, measure your results. Now we have a little thank you to our sponsors. And then um, my contact information is the one in green and, and John Harris, I think is, was also on the call and Fletcher Martin, our creative director. So if you wanna jot that down, you are welcome to write me anytime and I'm happy to answer questions um, starting now. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts or wanna share what they're doing um, getting ready for the holidays? And if anyone's having issues with audio or your mic's not working, um, Bula, this may be the case for you. Um, if you wanna put questions in the chat, 
um, feel free to do that as well. You can get to the chat uh, at the bottom of your screen. Um, there'll be some buttons and chats in the middle if you're doing it on a PC or a Mac. Lizzie, do you know of any online tutorials for the ads manager on Facebook? I don't know if anyone else has ever ventured into that area of Facebook, uh, but I have and I still have nightmares. <laughs> it's very confusing, at least to me. It's super confusing. It's really hard to follow. And you know, now Facebook has Facebook business. It has Facebook ads. It's like all these other like, um, websites that are still affiliated with Facebook, but it's just a, like, it's changing so much and so fast. Is there, are there any tips that you have for us to like stay on top of that? Facebook itself puts out a lot of great information. Um, and what am I thinking of? Like, um, tutorials on how to use its products. So usually I go straight to Facebook, um, and they'll have, um, they'll have lots of documentation on their website to walk you through how to use ads manager. Um, just is, is anybody here using ads manager? I can just show a fan. Okay. Yeah. So um, just to kind of a very brief summary, um, they have this hierarchy. So you're creating campaigns, then you're creating, um, I think it's ads and then you're creating ad sets. So you kind of are choosing um, first the, the highest level of what you're advertising, then you're choosing kind of the medium level and then the ad sets are the actual copy creative. So in the campaign, you're choosing goal. In uh, ad sets, you're choosing your audience and duration and budget, I think it is. And then in ad sets, you're choosing your copy and, and creative. Once you have one set up, I often just duplicate it and then adjust it. Um, and swap out the creative instead of always starting from scratch. But yeah, it can it can be like I said, the more you go into the depths of Facebook, the <laughs> the more uh, the less intuitive it can be. But I do find it um, you just get more control and you're able to. Um, it does have some added features. Plus, when you run ads through Ads Manager, they're not showing up on your page as a post but they're showing up on your followers or on non-followers feeds. So, and, and you can also have them go through Instagram by just checking a box, they can appear on Instagram. So that's another good um, thing to keep an eye on. If you do check um, that your ads are appearing on Instagram, sometimes it looks like your Facebook performance is really low. You're like, why is this ad performing so low? And just make sure you're looking at placements because sometimes it's performing really well on Instagram, um, but just not taking off on Facebook. Um, do, does everybody, um, do you feel kind of ready for the holiday season? Do you have questions going in or is this, are you more interested in just social media in general? Do you, um, do you feel like this was helpful or you're able to, do you have questions to, to be able to leverage the information? I think it was Everybody a great uh, presentation. Thank you so much uh, for putting this together for us today. Um, it's a lot of good review and a lot of different things. I, my industry, you know, is kind of, I do do some things around the holiday season and everything, but, you know, more so uh, during the whole course of the year, but really great information. I appreciate it. Oh, great. Thank you. All right. All right. I'll give um, one more minute for questions. And if not, we'll um, wrap up about 10 minutes early. Like I said, RPBA will share this presentation. Um, I believe send the link, right? And um, if you have any questions, you can of course reach out to me through the through the holidays and beyond. Yeah, and another thing uh, to be aware of too is that um, at 
RPBA. Um, we are going to be running the annual Live Love Shop rebate program again, um, starting Small Business Saturday and running through the new year. Um, and that's where you know any any of your customers or residents that that come in with receipts um, of at least 20, 20 or twenty five dollars um, from four or more businesses. Um, we'll be able to submit those receipts and get uh, a rebate check back from us. We send those checks out typically in February uh, once we get done processing them all. But um, that's, you know, something that that businesses are, are you know, welcome and encouraged to, to sort of glom onto as you're developing your promotions um, for the holiday shopping season. Um, restaurants count. Um, bar tabs count. We do have caps for, for grocery spending and liquor stores. Um, but if you're a restaurant, you know, let people know that their, their Grubhub receipts are, are eligible. Um, delivery receipts are eligible, um, just like any, any retail. And this will be the first year that we're doing the program where people will be able to submit all their receipts online. Um, we'll have an online form uh, where people can just upload um, their receipts or pictures of their receipts um, to, to submit for that for those rebate checks. So that, you know, for some folks could be a powerful motivator um, and something to consider as you're you're setting up your content calendar and your and your holiday promotions uh, as we head into that holiday season. Uh, so stay tuned for more information about that. Um, thank you all for for coming. We are going to be sharing the slide deck from today. Um, okay, and I think we'll um Sorry to interrupt. I think Jennifer, oh, yeah. do you have a question? I do have a question for Cindy about the oh, holiday yeah. rebate. Yeah, yeah. Um, do gift cards count in the holiday in the Live Love Shop? Yes. If you are so, buying a gift card and you have a receipt showing that you're buying a gift card at the 400 or somewhere, like the receipt for you buying that gift card counts. Do we know if most of the small businesses have gift cards? Is there anything that we can do to maybe support them getting access to that? possibility in advance of Live Love Shop. Yeah, and I'll, I'll invite- Not pertaining, I guess, to social yeah. media. We can talk about it another time. But. Sure, and that's something that, like, certainly in the early days of the pandemic, um, we really did kind of encourage um, businesses to, to, to consider setting up or to set up, um, you know, as part of their POS system. If you're using something like Square or Shopify, uh, usually they have that functionality be, you know, sort of built in um, for businesses that, that aren't on one of those platforms. You know, it may be a time to consider, you know, adding Square or Wix or whatever, um, just so that you can enable that. Um, plenty of people did um, during the early days of the shutdown because gift cards were sort of an important bridge for folks. Um, but absolutely, yeah, gift cards count um, for, for Live Love Shop receipts. Um, and like, it's definitely something that we encourage. I think we probably still have some information on our website uh, for the pandemic resources and like the technical assistance section on options for enabling or, or beginning to offer gift cards for business for sure. Thank you. And I do think Small Business Saturday, um, you know, it will be a potentially bigger deal this year, if not um, just shopping, shopping local has certainly been a message we've heard now for many months given the pandemic. Um, so I think taking advantage of that, finding ways that you fit into that um, and reaching the people local to you, especially in advertising audience you can think of, um, I think we'll see more and more emphasis on that from everyone, from every community. And Lizzie, just so that you know, the reason I was asking those questions is I'm trying to think of ways to connect Loyola University students, faculty, and staff to supporting local, even though they're not here. Um, you know, uh, every, I mean, very, very, very few people are actually working or taking classes on campus. Right. So we are trying to think internally about how do we continue to support small businesses in Rogers Park and Edgewater when nobody's just out, you know, going out to lunch. Um, so that's why I asked about gift cards and we'll follow up on that. But you guys might be helpful yeah. in thinking about that as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, a great point that those businesses rely on. on Loyola traffic, More than so. people realize. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, reali we now realize it. And so we're trying to figure out what we can do because we don't want everybody to come back to campus in six months, eight months, whatever. And all the businesses are closed down, you know. Right, right. 
we do have a list on our website of local businesses with their hours and you know if they have delivery or if they have pickup and uh we have added if they have gift cards if they have provided that information to us we do have another intern making calls and so we can add, just make sure that that question is asked before we were asking if they had like a gofundme or something like that for their staff but i think it's a good idea to start asking do you sell gift cards um and then adding that to our list um because just getting that information together is not just crucial but also it does take time but however it, it also sometimes provides a business with like oh I should be doing this right like by asking yeah. the question yeah and I just put a link in the chat uh to the page on our website in the uh COVID-19 resources section um where under COVID-19 marketing we have a whole section about how to set up gift cards um and resources that you can use to do that so um that information is there but yeah, I appreciate the question, Jennifer, because it just prompts me then to think of, uh, you know, resharing that information with our businesses, like sending another email with those resources or also looking for, uh, and also enhancing our own list of businesses that are providing them and making it public, right? Promoting that. So thank you. Great, all right. Well, thank you everyone. I appreciate you spending um, time at the beginning of your work week on uh, social media. If you have questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me and you'll get the presentation link. Um, but I, I wish you all the best of luck managing your social media in this uh, very difficult, very um, unusual holiday season. And thank, thank you, you again. Thanks our PBA for putting this on. Thank you, A5. Yeah. And thank you, everyone. everybody, for being here. We hope this has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, let us know. Yep. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.